Okay, this is going to be the video for section 3.3 homework. If your next score in the next statistics test is converted to a Z score, you would want the Z score, you would want the biggest Z score they want for you. Because that means you're that many standard deviations uh, above that. Okay? There's only one of those, which is B. You could read through and pause it. Would correspond to the highest of five different possible test scores. Oh, okay, so if these were five different test scores, uh, the negative two would be the worst, negative one would be next. It would just be in order from least to greatest. Zero means you got average. So that's how that kind of works. And you could pause the video and look at that what that thing said too. Okay, what is the difference between the carrier's data speed and the mean of the 50 data speeds? So the... Okay, so 50 airports, the highest airport the best speed was 73.3. So just basically saying how much higher is that than the mean? So to figure that out, we could, all we have to do is do this right here is um, take, let me try something real quick. We have to take the one that they said, which I can't see anymore. Okay, so we need to take, okay, good. We need to take the 73.3 and minus the 20, uh, sorry, not the 20, the 73.3 and minus 18.77. That's what we need to do. So I'm just gonna pull my calculator up and do it. So to get this, we need to do, uh, good, now I can see it, 73.3 minus the mean that they gave me, which was 18.77. So that's how much higher it was than the mean. So it should be five, four, five, three. Five, four, yeah, five, three. So essentially what they're saying is this one airport's this much higher than the mean. Okay, now the difference in standard deviation. So the difference in standard deviations, all we have to do is take this difference and divide it by the standard deviation they gave us, which is basically just cut in th this difference into to p like how many 29.25s fit into 54.53. Okay, let's try to divide it by 29 decimal 25. 1.86. 1.86 and two decimals let me make sure yep there's a four there 1.864 so that should be right one point eight six okay good okay now whether it's positive or negative depends on if the data value was above the mean or below the mean and this value 73.3 was above the mean so it's going to be 1.86. If it was below the mean, it would have been a negative. Okay. Now, if it's two or more, we consider that significantly high. Since it's not, we just say it's not significant. Okay, not significant. And... Okay, that's going to be it. You can see down here, it's not letting me do it. So, okay, there it goes. Let's do that. Let's check our answer. There we go. Okay, so consider values as you sort of negative two or less than or two or higher than to be out of the ordinary. So pause the video and look through this question. Okay, so it's going to be A. Now they're saying significantly low. So what you want to do is take the 21.7 and minus 4.9 and then minus another 4.9. Whatever that number is, that's the one that's going to go in here. So let's try it. Okay, so it's going to be... 21.7, because that's the mean. 
and you're going to subtract minus 2 times 4.9. Okay? So any score 11.9 or less. Okay, one decimal, one decimal. That's it. Okay. Significantly high just does the other thing, so it's going to be what's greater than. So we're going to do the same thing, but instead of there being a minus 2 times 4.9, it's going to be a plus. 21.7 plus 2 times 4.9. Looks like it's going to be 31.5. Anything 31.5 or higher? Good off the next one. Okay, based on. Okay, the more extreme that one, the more extreme it's going to be one with the higher z score. So, what I'm gonna do is get rid of this calculator. I'm, I'm gonna bring it up later, but what we wanna do is bring up um, my notepad and then show you the z score. So, the way z score looks is it's z equals the data minus the mean. All divided by the SD. Okay. Newborns, mean, standard deviation. Okay. So there was um, a male who weighed 1,700 grams. So you have to subtract that by that male's mean, which the males have a mean of 3271.6 and a standard deviation of. 6.1, oh, sorry, 6.5.7. So these are the Z scores. I'm just going to put an M for the males. Now for the females, that female weighed uh, 1,700. And their average is 3044.6. Divided by and their standard deviation is 654.2. So what you have to do, this is for the females, you have to find this, whatever that is, find this where that is. The one that's more extreme is going to be the one that's farther from zero. Farther from zero. Okay, so you have to get a calculator and do that. Because I would have to close this other um, this other tab out, and I don't I don't want to close it. So just find this one's going to be the one that's more negative, more in the negative. Okay, and just by looking, it's well actually I don't know which one it's going to be. Smaller standard deviation, bigger thing. This is definitely a bigger difference up here. It's a bigger difference because it's farther away, divided by something smaller. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be this one, but you guys figure that out. Okay, here I have some steps how to do it. So we need to find P60. Um, okay, so we need to go to uh, summary stats, column, select column, percentile. Okay. Just like we did with means, but we're just gonna find something else. So let's get rid of this thing so we have a bigger screen to work with. Hopefully this is gonna open for us. Good, it does. So stat, summer stat, just following their directions, columns, select the column you want, and here's the percentile we want. So which one we want? 60, that's what the 60 means down there. So we're gonna type 60 in here. And let's try it. Okay, 6.25. There you go. It's that easy. Okay, Q1 is the same thing as P25. 
You actually have two ways to do this one. So I just closed that out, went back to the data set. So you have two ways. One way is to stat, columns, dun, 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 select what columns you want. If you click on statistics, you'll see Q1. See Q1 right there? So Q1 is 0.8. Okay, so, so the time is to do a graph and then hover over to get him. Okay, let's open these in Stack Crunch. Go ahead and do it their way. See if it works. Okay, so here I'm on a box plot, variable one. Me personally, I like my uh, box plots to go Horizontally, I don't need fences. <coughs> okay. Of course, I can't hover over. Okay, it's not going to work for me. Okay, so that's how you do it there, but I'm just going to do it a different way. So I'm going to do our normal, just finding things. These are just values in this statistics tab. Like we're used to finding means and standard deviation stuff you're already used to. Okay, so we what we want is we want the median, we want the min, the max, Q1 and Q3, and that's it. So the five number summary is the min, Q1, median, Q3, and max. So those are the five five items I want. So this is another way to do it. It's not in the right order, but so you have to figure that order out. So it's gonna go 120. Okay, next is going to be Q1, 126. Next will be the uh, median, 135. Oh. Now we're going to go to Q3, 137. And lastly, we'll do the max at 150. Okay, now we need to get a box plot, and uh, we could just go look at our box plot from before, so let's just go graph it. And there's his horizontal, so click the, see I hit that click the draw box is horizontal, mm -hmm. compute. So it looks like there's, starts around 120, there's a big space there, a little space, and then extends a little bit farther out. So it's looking like it's either a or C, most likely it's gonna be C. So I'm gonna go look at the median, because the median on A is above 135, and the median of C is below 135. So here the median is above 135. I'm looking at this, um, I can't see it, but you're looking at this line where I kind of poked. Looking at that line. Okay, so, it's the one, it's the line in the middle of the box. That's what I'm looking at. So I'm going to go with uh, A. Okay, how about that? Because I was wrong. Let me look at Q1, it's good. Let me look at Q3. It's not that far. Q3 is pretty close. Q3 is pretty close. Oh. I didn't see D. Oh. Okay, I think I messed up because of my, uh, yeah, my Q1 is above 125. A's Q1 is below that, so the answer should be D. Okay. Okay, so let's do another one of these and see if we can get it right this time. So men's, 
We want to do men's. Okay, men's. Stay away from the women's or just ask about the men. So I just click on graph. If you didn't see that, I'm just hitting the graph button. Graph. I go down to box plot. I'm, gonna, I'm hitting, if you look where it says other options, just scan down, uh, select columns, where, group by, grouping options, and then it says other options. I'm clicking on that uh, draw boxes horizontally, and I'm clicking off that other guy and compute. And I, for, never, I forgot to select which one I want. I want the males. Okay, good. So let's start this. Q1 round 60. Okay, let's take a look at this. Q1 around 60. So A's, Q1's around 60. B's, Q1's around 60. And D's, Q1's around 60. Now one nice thing, if I did go back and maybe I should do it with uh, the fences, then it'll draw the fences for me. I'm just going back and graphing it with the fences to see if something pops up. Okay, so what this means is that there's an outlier on the high side. So, looks like your answer is gonna be D. So I just, where I did horizontal, I just kept the other box. And what are the outliers? So the outliers, anything outside, anything that's like in an X, looks like it's about 105. So I'm looking at D, where I, I go to the X and just look down, I see 105, and then the answer is 105 is the only one. Okay, so let's go do the other data set. Women's. Okay, full data set. Well, I guess it's in there already. Goddess. Okay, graph. So I'm graph, I'm hitting box plot. Then I'm selecting the females this time. Let's use the fences just in case there's any outliers. And horizontally. Okay, so there's an outlier on the high side. And the next height is around 100. So let's see if we can see an outlier on the. Right side there. Okay, so it's not letting me go down there. And then, uh, let me see if that works. Nope. This might be another problem, but if it's the same problem, I'm going to go with B. Because there's only one outlier. And the outliers here is going to be somewhere around the same. One or three. One dot. Okay. Oh, okay. Very much similar. So if you look at both of these box plots. Let's just put them both together and see if we could do that. Let's just go to box plot and select both the columns. This will give us a good comparison. So see, this is better. So you can see overall females, see how females boxes are shifted to the right. So since just shifted to the right, women tend to have um, oh my God. disappeared. Oh, there it is. Maybe. Sorry. See, it's not cooperating. But just look for the one. Females tend to have higher um, pulse rates. So look for the one that says female has higher pulse rates. In terms of variability, you're looking at the length of the, the rectangles, the Q1 to the Q3 rectangles. Now, the variability of both groups are roughly the same because that's how we measure variability in a box plot is how big those IQRs are. And the IQRs are roughly the same. I'm gonna flip back and see if there's any way to get it back. And got the outliers. Okay, so it's not letting me get to the last problem, but you should be able to get to the right one based on that. So, all right, thanks.